Greetings fellow conquerors, this is Darkfire Slide, and welcome back to the Pirates of Pomerania here in E4 version 1.12.2 Which apparently was not the last common sense patch as people have been quick to correct me uh, Now we are at an interesting intersection because while we've taken a lot of land uh, from separatists and the like uh, We do also have three different groups of separatists that we have to worry about here uh, all of whom are projected to rise up in the next uh, seven, eight years or so. So we're worried about that, obviously. And uh, as a matter of fact, let's see, do we happen to have a theologian? Nope, we... and we never do. We never do happen to have a theologian, and we could really use a theologian. Our army is not in great shape either. We are currently... Uh, <laughs> We're currently down a lot of manpower, and it's uh, looking increasingly likely that we're going to have to hire uh, for our force limit an additional two mercs just to be able to, like, deal with this. But all that being said, I, I think this was a pretty, like, last episode, pretty successful war, I would say, against uh, the Polish Commonwealth. We've taken a decent chunk of land from them, and I think that we will be able to continue to take land from them in the future, which is going to be really helpful for us. But for the time being, it's basically all quiet on the Western Front because we have a lot of people who really don't like us right now. Brandenburg is in coalition range. Poland is not. I think there was somebody else who was in coalition range, but I forget at this point. Point is, we've aggressively expanded, and people don't like us because we've aggressively expanded. But we're just going to keep playing on Speed 4 and, uh, of course, also start pirating more. And we can make a lot of money by pirating. Let's see, and we had a third one here, right? So one thing that was actually, I think, added in this patch was the automatic merging of fleets into one another for doing similar tasks. So if you have a bunch of ships, like, patrolling the same seas, they would all join together into one. Yep. So we definitely have that this patch, and that was something that was actually brought on by Arumba. Uh, and we can all be thankful to him for doing that. Okay, so we just got the Florentine School event, and I love this event. And I think we, we have the points for it, and the yearly prestige is pretty nice. Some people really don't like prestige. I love prestige because the morale impact over the long course of a game is actually very, very powerful. Um, especially because prestige can be very, very consistently raised through idea groups, national ideas, etc. Whereas things like uh, power projection, for example, can be very difficult to get and, you know, maintain normally. But it would appear that our manpower is no longer negative. That being said, we do have some separatists rise pretty quickly here. Now, there's a lot of debate in the comments, and I, and I would advise everyone to debate this until the moment it actually becomes possible, but basically, Pomerania can become Prussia. And, you know, that's pretty neat. But some people are really against that, and I, I kinda, I'm kind of erring on the side of everyone who's saying, don't don't turn into Prussia, because Pomerania is kind of its own unique thing, like, everyone and their mother has done a Prussia run, it feels like. And so that could make this run really, really unique, is if we just stay as Pomerania. Honestly. Whoo, boy. This is really bad for us. Getting this many rebels, in addition to what we already have, we may have to raise autonomy here. We may not have a choice, because... This is, this is a really, really ugly revolt for us, and we're probably going to have to raise mercs in order to actually survive the impending wave of rebels. <laughs> but we can at least defend against one of them. The other group that's going to pop up is going to be in Kolm, uh, but we'll see what happens. They are they are peasants, and we're going to get six peasants in Kolberg, six separatists in Kolm. Uh, I guess the type changes depending on what rebels are actually active there, but here we go. Mm. Oh boy, rebels. My favorite, my favorite thing to wake up to. Now we only lost 387 men against the the peasants there, so that's good.
All right, he's a 3-1, we're a 1-4. I think we've got this, especially since this is a Grasslands province. So let's go ahead and attack. I love this name here, our, our mercenary. Uh, De Saint Esprit's first uh, mercenary men-at-arms. It's really cool, actually. Uh, we are going to lose 1,218 men there. And that's unfortunate because we do have to worry about these Teutonic rebels rising up pretty quickly here. And I think in this version of the game, as I've been noticing is that rebels tend to pop up in every province and consolidate later rather than just kind of forming this, you know, blob of rebels in one uh, area, so to speak. Our pirating is sort of going well. I mean, not really. Before we were making a lot more money from trade. But now we're not making quite as much. Which is unfortunate. I mean, if we had more boats with which to pirate, that would probably be... And you know, I call them boats, but honestly, ship is probably the correct term. Who knows? Alright, so the provinces we have to worry about here are Tuchel and Marienburg. So we're going to hope that they... We should probably park our troops in the Woodlands province. Let's see, Pomerania gains a claim on Ermland. Ooh, we got a free claim on the Teutons. That is most excellent. We'll be sure to press that once our manpower has recovered at least somewhat. <laughs> the one thing I am curious about is... If we, if we can get a hold of our pirate fleet here. Uh, I'm curious to see if, if we tell them to stop pirating uh, and we tell them to protect trade instead, uh, how much money could we possibly uh, make here? Because it looks like, honestly, it would be about the same in a lot of different places. Like, should we collect in our home note? Should we pirate in our home note instead? Like... That would be interesting. Okay, our trade went down by 0 0.03, so I'm just gonna venture a guess and say that that didn't work as intended. But we will try, let's see, I, I noticed those uh, Teuton Rebels are about to pop up, but yeah, the trade's just not as good as it uh, was before, which is quite unfortunate for us, but it looks like Coleman's about to become a core, which is good. Uh, unfortunately, our manpower is still quite low. Colm is now considered a part of our patrimony. Good, because the autonomy is still like 50%. <laughs> looks like Poland's getting uh, some decent rebels, some Polish magnate rebels. I have no idea. I think that's like an ev tied to an event. But we can pick up Diplotech 4, and, and that's a, or Diplotech 5, rather. And that's a, sort of a point of contention for us here. We're still at Admin Tech f uh, 3, and we would really, really, really like to get uh, more than that. <laughs> Let's see, uh, we'll marry Muscovy. That makes our alliance more stable. Now, one thing that is nice is getting Diplotech 5 will raise our trade efficiency by, in this patch, it's still 10%. So we're just making, a, we're making 0.4 more ducats a month, which is quite a lot, actually. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it definitely is. Okay, so we're just kind of waiting here with, uh, breath, I would say. I, you know what? Better safe than sorry. Let's raise two mercenary regiments. Just just to make sure we survive these rebels, because all all this you know, all these giant wars we've been fighting, we don't want it all to go to waste because we lost to rebels. And it may be a little bit before we actually get into a war here. Ooh, Kun uh, Königsberg is quite the province. I like that. 18 development? Mm-mm. Especially when we accept Prussian culture. Plus, it'll expand us along the coastline. Okay, so we can lose 10 ducats, gain 10 prestige, or lose 5 prestige. Uh, give me the... Give me the prestige. Any day. So the, the, uh, the Brandenburgian peasants have stopped, which is nice. The Teutonic Order, the Teutonic uh, Rebels, though, on the other hand, they're still going to rise up. 
It's just taking a while. Which is good, because it's, you know, giving us more manpower, but... Now, it hurts because we really need these troops, and I know I could have lowered maintenance this whole time, but I don't like to lower maintenance when Rebels are going to pop up in, like, a year. Let's see. So we have the end of the War of the Roses. Although, look, a province is being besieged. Yeah, it looks like London itself is being besieged by pretender rebels. It looks like the Lancastrians are in charge, though, and have won the war, so to speak. Alright, well, looks like we're going to get military tech 6, and we don't have corruption in this patch, so we don't have to worry about it. Which is kind of nice, honestly. Alright, it pains me, but our advisor's pretty old, our military advisor. So, I'm thinking, once we beat these Teutonic Rebels, whenever they decide to actually fire this, because this percent chance stuff, once that happens, I would love to replace him with an, an admin advisor, and one thing we could actually do is get a uh, theologian, and that would really, really help our admin grow, and another thing we could do to kind of catch up, especially since we're so far ahead on military in the first place, is just kind of, you, you know what, that's actually a good idea, let's just go ahead and focus admin for the time being. And uh, we, we got the Teutonic Rebels. Alright, we lost 1,600 in that first engagement. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to defeat this other this other group here. But we'll see where they go. Let's, let's hope they attack us in Marienburg itself. Because that would make our lives a lot easier. Now, the Polish Separatists are, are getting ready here. We're going to go ahead and fight the, uh, the Separatists. And we only lost 800 men, actually. Which is... Really surprised. Uh, also, <laughs> this is surprising. We got a cardinal. That's nice. Now it might actually be worth it to improve relations with the papal state. And holy crap! Look at the papal state. Look at that. Wow. Scary, scary papal state. Allied with Hungary, Austria, and Lucca. Oh no. <laughs> Who's he at war with? Ferrara, Corsica, and Savoy. In the Austrian conquest of Verona from Ferrara. Ferrara's been doing a little bit of expanding himself. Uh, Serbia done a little bit of expanding. Ottomans about as big as we would expect. Uh, Aragon, I think, has lost a war to Spain, or Castile, I should say. Uh, Granada still exists by some miracle alliance with Morocco and Tunis. Maybe that's the strat, right? Like, you just, uh, you just ally Morocco, Tunis, maybe Tlemcen, get all three of them. And then, with like through sheer numbers, you just somehow manage to defeat Castile, assuming he doesn't ally Portugal like he normally does. I don't know, some kind of wonder strat. Although Portugal has allied Aragon, so it's a very interesting political situation over there. Now, unfortunately, two of our allies, Bohemia and Hungary, really, really want to fight each other, like real bad. And that could pose a problem for us. You know, Denmark's friendly towards us, so we might as well improve relations with them. I don't anticipate allying them anytime soon, but it can't hurt to have another friend in the world, especially since we're basically going to be, like, dismantling the HRE unintentionally. Okay, so we can lose 50 ducats or lose one uh, stability. We really need admin points right now to advance our tech, so we're going to lose the money there. <sighs> These Polish separatists are, like, trolling me because... Well, one thing I'm tempted to do is actually uh, lower the autonomy to get them to fire faster, and then we can kill them, and this will be a better province for it. So let's just let's just go ahead and do that. We'll get a bit more money from the province itself, and then once the rebels are dead, we can disband the mercenaries, make more money again, and, you know, life is good. Looks like the Teutons are having a little bit of trouble with rebels. Let's see. We have no diplomats to send, obviously. Uh, let's Let's get one back here. Let's double check and see what would happen if we were to attack the Teutonic Order. Um, literally all of my allies would come in. And this patch is actually this patch is actually before the patch where they got rid of the ability for nations to um, or rather they they made it so allies couldn't like join another war for another 10 years. Like this hasn't happened yet in EU4. So 
quite quite uh, powerful for us here. And uh, one thing we could actually do is because we have a claim on Ermland, uh, we could just you know theoretically get into this. Uh, how is our aggressive expansion looking? Negative 21 with Brandenburg, but apart from that, it's mostly cooled off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fabricate a claim on the Livonian Order. Uh, the only province we can. <laughs> and we're going to try to get a really, really, really big war here. Alright, we can advance in tech. We can now build temples, which is nice if we, you know, had the money to do that. As we all know, you need a pretty decent amount of development to actually get that much money, or just, you know, take a lot in uh, the spoils of war, so to speak. But this is a good time to just kind of relax and get our manpower back and... get ready for the next war. You know, it's it's the it's the ebb and flow of EU4. That's just kind of the way the game works. And this is something you never see in the later patches. Uh, the Emperor actually has 50% Imperial authority. <laughs> but 47 princes are against the reform for some reason, so... Uh, which I find quite humorous, considering that there are actually three princes voting for Austria. Funnily enough, Bohemia is actually, um, <laughs> Bohemia is, would actually be, like, close to voting us to be the, uh, the next a HRE Emperor, which would be pretty, pretty funny. Okay. Is everyone still on board for the war? The answer may surprise you. Uh, it looks like yes, everyone is still on board with the war, and uh, honestly, that makes our lives pretty easy. We can just more or less grab as much land as we want to. We, well, now, one thing we should do, though, we should definitely do this. We should actually fabricate a claim on a lot of these provinces, because uh, in this version, well, I, I mean, in all versions, really, uh, fabricating a claim reduces the amount of... Uh, aggressive expansion and other issues that you have with taking your province. We lost 1,200 men there, uh, not too bad, but uh, more importantly, one thing we can do is before we pay for them, we can just delete these mercenaries, and that should help us make a lot more money. Alright, and naturally we're going to hire a theologian because theologians are stupidly good. Uh, even though they were, I think, yeah, they were nerfed in this version of the game, I think, or shortly before it. Because as we can see, it's minus two. Theologians used to be minus three uh, national unrest, which was just, like, super broken. It made the game ridiculously easy. I'm trying to decide if we if we want to lower autonomy in any of these provinces. Like, I would love to lower autonomy in Danzig, for example. I, I think I am going to go ahead and do that because I would really just like to reap the the tax benefits of of a province like that. Now, I'll, I'll do the same in Berlin and in Marienburg because I would just really, really like we really just need money right now. And that's going to get us another 0.5 ducats a month. Now, that could be a dangerous decision that you know bites us in the ass later. Uh, we'll lose 20 legitimacy because, again, uh, we really just need admin points more than anything right now uh, to catch up. <laughs> if, we, if we were to just wait around, we would be able to get the next tech in five years. So, I mean, obviously we would like to get that because national ideas are pretty awesome. Now, funnily enough, the Teutonic Order has taken religious ideas. Uh, they even have Deus Volt, which is pretty funny considering that like none of their neighbors are a different religion like everyone around is catholic so i don't think that's really uh doing all that much for them there but i think we are going to recruit uh some more infantry when the time for war actually comes around for the time being though we're mostly focused on rebels and this is this is one interesting strategy by the way for nations where expansion isn't as quick uh, rather than focusing on rebels in new frontiers, what you can do instead is lower autonomy in provinces you currently own and cultures that you have, 
uh, or have accepted, I should say. And this is especially true when you can choose what cultures you accept. And then to kind of speed up the process of making more money, uh, you can lower the autonomy uh, so as, you know, to give you more money and resources. And as you can see, we're now making three ducats a month, uh, which is pretty awesome overall. And we, we may actually save up for a temple here, which would be pretty awesome and be a cool way to kind of uh, consolidate. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and declare another war, though. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Yeah, we'll just we'll just call in all of our allies. Uh, although, eh, we'll leave Hungary out of it, because they are fighting with uh, the Ottomans, it looks like. Uh, nope, they're at war with Naples, Lucca, and Savoy. Who? Oh, the Ottomans have attacked Venice over Negroponte. As well they should. It is rightful uh, Turkish clay at this point. <laughs> Let's attack Poland again. Seems like a good idea. Now, we're going to attack the Teutonic Order. And we're not going to invite Hungary. We're just going to invite Muscovy and Bohemia. Who are more than happy to join. Now, interestingly, Muscovy does not have a claim on any of the Livonian land, and so neither of them really have a stake in this, which is good for us because then it's basically just a charity war on their part, and they're going to fight all of our battles for us, and we're just going to get a ton of land for free and money, of course, which is good. Now, I mean, admittedly, that's kind of exploitive, exploitative, whatever the word is. Ooh! It looks like, uh,. Let's see. Oh, we lost our trade ships again because of the... Alright, you guys stop doing your mission. It looks like uh, four of the ships managed to survive, though, so that's good. But it looks like the Teutons left one of their forts uh, not maintained, which means that we're actually going to take it <laughs> without a fight, which is excellent. Absolutely excellent. Oh, another great idea that we got from the... Oh, hey, dude. No. Stop that. This is mine. I took this fort. It's mine. Leave it alone. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The Riggins got involved. Watch out. Well, that's going to be five war score for us. And look at look at the difference here. We lost about 2,000 troops, or 2,000 infantry, about... Uh, oh, Bohemia joined us to the last second. May have something to do with it. But <laughs> we didn't lose that many troops in this battle, and the Teutons and the Riggins lost, like, a ton of troops. Um, the Livonians trying something equally cheeky. We're going to let our troops recuperate, though, because we're going to need the manpower in order to uh, complete the rest of the war, more or less. But as you can see, easy war, easy life. We're going to get a lot of good land out of this. A lot of good land that's in accepted culture, accepted culture religion, and that's going to be really, really good for us. All right, now, let's see. All right, our first, uh, our first griff, let's see, or sorry, uh, Vardislav, the ninth griff, has been replaced by Ota, the third griff, who is one point worse than the previous griff, <laughs> if you can believe such a thing. Now, we are going to immediately boost stability because having negative one stability uh, in situations that we're in, can lead to things nasty things like peasant wars uh, and etc., which are just really, really not what we want, as you might imagine. Uh, Marienburg, let's see, unaided during blockade, monthly autonomy change for five years. Uh, yeah, we'll pay the admin. It's a stiff price, but we'll pay it. Now here's an interesting question, you guys. Um, Danzig is of Prussian culture, whereas uh, Pomerania is Pomeranian culture. What do you guys think of the idea of making Danzig our either our actual capital or our trading capital? Um, what do you guys think of that idea? Because Danzig is a very, very lucrative province. It's better than any of the provinces that we have, and get you know making it our capital would be pretty epic. So we can lose one stability or lose 100 diplomatic power. We'll lose the diplomatic power. No big deal. No problem. All right, we could gain a lot of trade power if we built a marketplace in Stetten, which would be nice. However, I would very much more like the reliable 0.23 that we would get from building a temple in Danzig. For the time being. For the time being. Once we have a more stable baseline, I would very much love to build a more uh, 
build more trading things. Because that's the, kind of the idea of this playthrough, is to kind of own the trade in uh, the Lubick node and in the Baltic. Now, unfortunately for us, Walter Mierk is going to... Our Mierka is probably going to die soon, but somebody had a great idea in that we should name our uh, like a heavy ship or a, like an actual province after him because he's been such an excellent general for us and has won us like multiple wars now. So, and I'm I'm in agreement with this idea. I think it's a great idea. This Teutonic fleet is very scary. I mean, actually, it's kind of not, but it's better than our fleet. So we're just kind of have to we just kind of have to live with it here. There may come a day when I remember to actually, you know, put my troops where they belong and, and put my boats away before I start a war, but it is not this day, and it may not be any time in the near future. I always forget to put my trade ships up in port. Now, as you can see, Danzig is already at 0% autonomy, which is awesome because now we're making a ton of ducats from it and especially once this uh, temple gets built it's another 0.23 a month very powerful very powerful so we could lose stability or gain a claim or gain a claim on Potsdam get a free claim on Brandenburg that's awesome that's two free claims that we've gotten this game That's so good. That's so good. And we would love to attack Brandenburg, too, because their allies are crap. They have uh, Hesse and saxe lauenburg Oh, hey, we have... We have enacted the first Imperial Reform. Uh, oh, this event, Cardinal Minister. Uh, missionary Shrink, Tolerance of Heretics, Yearly Papal Influence. Well, we don't really care about Tolerance of Heretics right now. Uh, that could actually be really useful for us, although our current Papal Influence... It's 1.59 a year, so that would bring us up to 2 a year, which would mean in... I don't know, I mean, that, that'd be like every year, so like every 50 years, we would be able to get like one free stability or something like that. I don't know, I, I think I'd rather take the prestige at this point. I think that's going to do more for us, especially because it increases our trade power, and we're in some very, very lucrative nodes, so... Oh! Oh, before I forget, somebody mentioned that we do have a merchant here in the Rhineland, and that it doesn't necessarily make sense for us to do that. Although, although the Rhineland does lead into Lubick. I don't know. I, I admit that, like, the inner workings of trade are still sometimes a mystery to me. Like... Although, at this point, one thing I do wonder is, is, is if it would be better for us to... Let's see, uh, Lüneburg declared war on Mecklenburg. Well, that's unfortunate. We like we like Mecklenburg's land, and we would have liked to uh, take it. Oh well. Now, one thing I, I wonder that I would like to test out is in the Baltic Sea. We actually own, uh, well, we, we will soon be owning two important centers of trade, and especially now that we own Danzig, it may actually be be, be in our better interest to collect trade from the Baltic rather than. Uh, transfer, so we're going to try that. So let's try it, since we still automatically collect from Lubick. Uh, that's 1.64 ducats a month more that we're making uh, from that, so <laughs> that was a good decision. You know, that's the thing with trade, you know, if you don't know how trade works, just, just try different things until it does work. It all makes sense in the end, is the thing. Let's see. Oh, I love this event. <laughs> we may we may gain someone that's even better than than Mierka. I would be happy to take a loan to get a general with 100 tradition. That's so good. That's so good. How good is he? He is a 233 compared to a 1401. Well, he'll be a good replacement when Walter Mierka dies. I will say that much. Especially considering that our army tradition is still only 13.5, uh, since we don't have anywhere near the amount of troops we need to actually um, get good military tradition. Now, one thing I, I love about playing bigger nations to start with, 
Oh, National Epic. Uh, yearly Prestige plus one for the cost of 10 admin and 10.63 ducats for 20 years. Absolutely. That's a great event. I love it. So now our Prestige is barely decaying from 42, which is very, very strong. Now, I didn't... I forgot to call in the Livonian Order as a co-belligerent, and I definitely meant to. Now, it looks like the Swedish are also getting involved, and this could be interesting because it may be a way for us to actually get involved with Sweden and kind of take over some of their coastal provinces. But we'll see what happens. Uh, one province left to occupy here, and that's Memel. All right, and everything's fully occupied, so now we can uh, get into a peace deal here. We will separate peace, the Livonians. Uh, we'll demand war reps and all of their worldly possessions. They don't want to accept a 46 war score, or peace offer, I should say. So they'll give us 12 ducats and war reps. That's worth it. That's worth it. It's going to be a lot of aggressive expansion, though. Uh, 5.7. Eh. That's not that bad. That's not that bad at all. Alright, and then the Teutonic Order. Alright, so this may actually spark a coalition. But it's a lot of land that we actually want, so... Um, I would classify this as worth it. It is going to be quite a lot of admin, though. Uh, which is unfortunate, but we can also humiliate them. Now, the reason we want to take this is so that we can actually get to uh, the province we took from the Livonians, because otherwise we don't have a way uh, to get there apart from our measly four transport ships. It also cuts the Teutonic fleet off and stops them from existing, which is really, really strong, as you might imagine. So I think that's well worth it. It's not really, it wouldn't really be that terrifying of a coalition because the Livonian Order is about to have a really bad day um, and not exist. And Li Poland, Lithuania, we can defeat with our alliance. So yeah, it's not really that terrifying at all, really. So the only other question is how much, how much money could they give us? The answer is not enough. So they could give us like 60 ducats, whereas we could get 40 power projection from defeating them. We're going to get 54.5 power projection and only it only costs us 28 diplomatic power. That's, this is a great just land grab, basically. Now, we could vassalize the Teutonic Order. And the only difference would be that basically... Uh, well, first of all, the problem one of the problems is the Teutons hate us. They really hate us. Um... <laughs> <laughs> like, really, 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 really hate us. Um, so that would be a problem in and of itself. Now, let's say we didn't take any of these provinces. That would significantly lower the amount of aggressive expansion that we get. It would still give us a pretty decent coalition here. Um, it'd also be a pretty powerful vassal, honestly. Um, if we look at the amount of development that they have, it's uh, 23, uh, 41... I could have looked at the ledger, but it's, it's 55 development. That's like it's like half the size of our country. Well, a little under half, but still, it's a, it's a lot, you know? So what we could do is take two provinces from them. Or better yet, we could just take Konigsberg from them, vassalize them. We'll still, we still run the risk of getting a coalition. And the problem is, with, with Poland, Lithuania, and Sweden... That actually is starting to resemble something kind of scary, uh, especially because Sweden's army in particular is so, so terrifying with that 20% additional uh, infantry combat ability. So this is a tough call. Um, we, may, we may have messed up by taking this province from the Livonian Order since we didn't co-belligerent them. We may have messed up in that regard. I really want to take the Teutons as a vassal. Now, all this being said, Sweden is actually pretty friendly towards us and might actually not join the coalition. And if you take out all of them, the Teutonic Order wouldn't be able to join. The Livonians are going to be killed by Sweden, more or less, so they're not really a threat. So then it would be Poland, Lithuania, and then maybe Sweden. Really. Well, and what's left of Brandenburg, who is being... Uh, 
Well, he's not getting wrecked by anyone at the moment, but I also don't think he has that impressive of a military. He's got 9k troops. It's not really that scary. I mean, what, what we're getting out of this, I think, is is maybe is maybe worth it. Now, we do have to wait uh, 7 days to get our other dip in that pack. <laughs> Now, if we, especially if we take Konigsberg, or Konigsberg from the Teutonic Order, that would really, really um, make it less painful for us, really. I don't think we're going to be able to drag this out, but if we can... Oh, the year's about to tick. That may actually save us the Coalition from Sweden, because we're getting 2.4 uh, aggressive expansion reduction every year. Is there any province we can loot? There is a problem we can loot. We're going to loot it. Okay, so now we're going to check again. Sweden would still likely join the coalition. So let's see if we can wait another year. I, I doubt it. We're probably going to get call for peace. We're probably going to get call for peace. Not really much we can do about it. Oh, peace offer from Riga. Uh, Riga, you can leave the war, but you got to give us all your worldly possessions. That's uh, 28 ducats. Thank you for your generous contribution. All right, Poland is attacking uh, Mecklenburg because um, they're allied to saxe lauenburg I believe. No? Who are you allied with? Oh, Lüneburg. Lüneburg, right. Well, obviously, we're not going to give them military access because we hate them. We want their land. So that would be silly to give them military access. Alright, we're going to loot the province that we're about to take. Of course, because why wouldn't we? And I know this episode's running a bit long, but it is a good episode, so... Why not? And, th and this is a strategy you yourself can use if you're, if you're playing. Sometimes you can prolong wars... Uh, sometimes it'll last a little bit longer, especially if you just, like, blitz someone like this, right? It can be really easy to just kind of uh, sit here and not even get, like, a call for peace or anything. Alright, uh, we've reached the point where Sweden would no longer join the coalition. So, honestly, that's going to be pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, we can't humiliate them in this peace deal because it costs so much. Why is it costing so much? Oh, okay, it, it is 72% war score to uh, annex them. Because we're taking uh, Königsberg as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, that's fine by me. Let's do it. Alright, our prestige has reached uh, well over 50, so we get a free stability. I love that mission. All right, so we can improve Mecklenburg's opinion of us, get some diplomatic power and prestige. We can protect against Saxony, which would uh, reduce regiment costs by 10%, which is pretty nice. Uh, or also incorporate the Teutonic Order. I guess let's improve relations with Mecklenburg, even though they may not exist soon. We could actually build another temple, which would be pretty sweet. All right. Oh, also, we can go uh, start privateering again. Let's see, it wouldn't help in the Baltic, but we could go do it in Novgorod. Let's try that, see if it helps our trade at all. Uh, seems to be helping. All right. All right, our truce with Poland-Lithuania has ended, as can be expected. And this may mean that they start the coalition against us. We'll see what happens. A temporary alliance with Sweden could help us out a lot. Although Poland-Lithuania is an army at this point. Uh, not really something we should be worrying about.
But anyway, I think that is going to be the end of this episode. Let's go ahead and marry Bohemia because they've been such a great ally to us. And uh, yeah, I think we made a lot of progress in this episode. Think about the things I, I asked about this this episode, and uh, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. And you know, of course, like the video if you want to see the channel grow, and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And I'll see you next time.